Good morning, everyone, and a very warm Sunday morning welcome here to Circuit du Val d'Argentan here in Western France for finals day for the second round of the 2023 Rotax Max Challenge Euro Trophy season. My name is Alex Goldschmidt, your official commentator, overlooking the start finish straight in pr pretty much most of this 1,280 metre circuit that has been in operation since 1996. Yesterday, we had our heats, which totaled 15 through the racing that was uh, showcased by Junior Rotax, Senior Rotax, DD2, and DD2 Masters. And after everything, after the dust had settled yesterday, we found out who were the respective leaders after the ranking after heats in all four respective classes. Seven races will take place today in the form of, first of all, at 10.40 local time, the only second chance heat, as we will have 22 senior Rotax drivers battling away for the final six positions in the top 36 that will proceed through to the free final later on this morning, which will take place at 11.55 local time. So looking back at yesterday, we had uh, plenty of great close quarter action around this circuit, which really does help to carry momentum. That's the key focus here is momentum carrying, but also you do need to have a little bit of straight line speed and also the opportunity to have some slip streaming particularly down the back straightaway and down the incredibly long start finish straight that comes out of the 12th and final corner where drivers are pushing well in excess of over 100 kilometers an hour. I've even heard from a couple of the DD2 drivers I spoke with this morning that they were pushing close to 120 kilometers an hour heading into Clubhouse. But yesterday we had uh, some great racing in the Junior Road Tax cl uh, class where Mateo Radenkovic ended up topping the ranking after the heats, having taken pole position in time qualifying on Friday afternoon and then carried on that run of form into yesterday, picking up three heat victories. And also with that, the rest of the top six were locked out by the United Kingdom. It was Argenti Motorsports' Kenzo Craigie who did not place outside of the top three all day yesterday. Best fish at... Uh, uh, best finish from him was the first heat where he finished second and then wrapped that up with two third place finishes. Max Cuthbert also taking two seconds and a fourth. Archie Clark was also very consistent taking three three place finish, uh, third place finishes yesterday. Timo Jungling took a win, uh, finished 11th in his second heat and then a fourth in his third heat. Uh, Thomas Behrman not able to make it in time for qualifying, but still shows that the 259 has pace underneath him, having taken a third, a fifth, and a seventh. Uh, Bolowet, who was unfortunately DQ'd post-qualifying due to an issue with the clutch under technical inspection post-qualifying, demoted him to the back of the grid, but he came back fighting, placing fifth, sixth, and sixth in his respective heats. Casper Shawmans. Had a technical drama in his opening heat, which meant that he would not finish after a lap and a half, but came back and took two race victories to put him eighth in the standings. Head of Ryan Bouguino and Tom Strella. Tom Strella, unfortunately, having his race day halted quite abruptly in a lap two incident on his third heat. Coming over to seniors now, and the top 30 were covered by 48 points at the end of six exciting and action-packed senior road tax heats yesterday. It was Mark Kimber that took three successive race victories, especially with the fact that his uh, racecraft is still very, very prevalent. In the first heat where he actually ended up uh, dropping down to eighth but went over the start-finish line to take the checkered flag in first position. He's closely followed by Sean Butcher, the reigning and defending Euro Trophy senior Rotax champion from last year, who picked up a second and two wins. Kai Hunter's run of consistency with three third place finishes puts him P3 ahead of Lachlan Robinson, who took a second, a sixth and a third. Uh, Kai Hillitz took a heat win and also took a fifth and a seventh place finish to put him fifth in the ranking after the heats with Ethan Jeff Hall, Debian Rost, Austin Lee, Miska Kaskinen, and Camille McFarlane rounding out the top 10. Very, very close indeed in terms of the classification right at the bottom end of the top 30. There were five drivers 
uh, that would end up being level on 48 points accumulated over their third respective heats. But the three that went through were Tobias Clausen, Montego Masson, and Magic Hamera. Coming on to DD2 and DD2 Masters now, Martin van Leeuwen not placing outside of the top three all day. Took a second in the first heat after a close call to finish between him and Carl Gustav Borgard, our pole sitter in DD2 on Friday afternoon, where they were separated by 71 thousandths of a second, Borgard picking up the victory. The tables were then turned around with uh, Van Leeuwen picking up the win in the second heat and Borgard second. Van Leeuwen would place third in the final heat and Borgard would be fifth. David Altleishner, who was second in time qualifying, rounded out the top three, finishing uh, 12th, 4th and 2nd in his respective heats. Maxim Griek's also level on points on 18, rounded out the top four with a 7th, 11th and a win in his three heats. Uh, Enzo Boll, a ninth, a 3rd and a 7th, rounding out the top five. Top 10 rounded out by Leonardo Bacaglini from Italy, Vili Viliainen from Finland, Victor Frostbay from Denmark, with Finland's Axel Sarniala and Belgium's Uno Mas, Nicola Guillaume, rounding out the top 10. Lucas Prano was a one point outside of the top 10 anyway, but after a difficult qualifying, the Canadian came back with the best finish in heat two of eighth place. In terms of the standings for DD2 Masters, uh, Martina Stankiewicz from Lithuania in the 5-3-3 is the uh, highest placed, 18th overall, but leading the way in the DD2 Masters classification. Dennis Thun from Germany, the reigning defending champion, second. Nicola Picot in third, ahead of Christoph Capita and Germany's Michael Becker, who round out the top five. Also, I have to give a shout out to someone who's just become a dad this week, Jeffrey Grothaus from JJ Racing. Uh, congratulations. Uh, so he's not here this weekend, so his good friend Yako is helping to run the team at the moment at JJ. Uh, they've had some pretty good form in the uh, juniors this weekend so far. But very shortly, we will be getting underway with our first of seven races, which will be the second chance heat for Simi Rotax. A total of 22 drivers representing the following nations. France, the United Kingdom, the United Arab Emirates, Austria, Latvia, Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, Australia, Japan and Italy. So just like the heats yesterday, it will be 10 minutes plus an additional lap. Any results called by myself up here in the commentary box are provisional pending any judicial and technical matters post sessions. So the first race of seven here on finals day at Circuit du Val d'Argentan. Let's get things going with the senior Rotax second chance heat. And ladies and gentlemen, here is your starting grid. On pole position representing France will be Mathis Carnejac. Alongside him will be the 382 from the United Kingdom, Alexander Savinkov, Zach Scala and Lucas Schlegel representing the UAE and Austria. 
will be on row number two. Tom Lenoir and Gustav Zusakov rounding out the top six row, uh, six, top six positions. Head of Mitch Hainert, Tito Wenleskali, Svere Urban, and William Christiansen from Denmark rounding out the top ten. Brandon Klein Nagelvoort and Tom Voaul from the UK and France will be on row six. Row seven, it's going to be Sam Bergstein and Marcel Lecri. Nicky Gauchi and Scott Westhovens round out row eight. Kamal Brad and Shuma Tazaki on row nine. Jonathan Divo and Loris Goisman round out the top 20. Elia Papasena, unfortunately excluded yesterday after a technical non compliance, will start from 21st with Baptiste Schneider from France alongside the Italian on the back row. So the red lights are ignited on the starting gantry. 10 minutes plus an additional lap set on the timer. The top six from this race will be thereby moving forward to the pre-final for the senior road tax class at 11.55 this morning. Looks to also be another scorching day in terms of the temperatures here at the circuit. Around 26 degrees Celsius. Wind is southwesterly, nine miles per hour. Humidity, 69%. So less than a third of this field will make it through to the top 36. It's Matis Kanajak on pole position. Alexander Savinkov alongside. Are we ready? Are we steady? Revs rise. Lights are out first time. The second chance heat gets underway. Kanajak holds on to the pole position at the moment as they go through into clubhouse. And that is Kamal Murad exiting out of the pit lane. Two by two at some point just outside of the top five going into turn three. Move for fourth has just been executed. And that was Lukas Schlegel. He's just been passed by, looks to be Alexander Savinkov, who's dropped to fourth place. Who will now make their way through into the left-hand hairpin at turn seven. And at the moment, it is the 907 of Matis Kanajak leading the way. Second position, it is Zach Scala from the Yaz Heat Racing Academy. The 316 representing the UAE. Field now comes across the line to complete lap number one. Kamen Jacques Lee, Scala, Uzakov, Savinkov, Schlegel, Liskali. As there is dramas for one of the MKC motorsport carts. That is Nicky Gauchi from Malta who has got possibly a I'm not too sure if he's got a noisy exhaust there is one cart that is sounding louder than the others meanwhile a little bit further up Brandon Klein Nagelvoort makes a move through into turn number five in the 393 and subsequently is trying to battle away that is with the 925 of Titoin Liscali that's for sixth position that's the danger zone here in this second chance heat Looks like Nicky Gauchi might be pulling into the pits very shortly. But eight minutes and 13 still to go. Kanajak still leads. Uzakov's up the inside of Scowler for P2. That's a nice move by the Latvian. So the top four have broken away. Alexander Savinkov from the United Kingdom rounds out the top four at the moment. As Scowler trying to put Uzakovs under some significant pressure for that second position. Lukas Schlegel and William Christiansen now exchanges, exchange places with the 378 from Denmark getting past the 362 from Austria, but they've got to keep their eyes on what's happening behind them. There is a loss of jockeying for the position. Loris Koisman battling away with the likes of Marcel Lecri, Jonathan Devo, amongst others. Three laps completed, and again, Schlegel goes into battle with William Christensen, heading into clubhouse. Black and white warning flag being shown to Tito Anliscali in seventh place, who's now got Mitch Hainert right behind him.
Sam Bergstein's dropped all the way down to 15th position. So that has promoted the likes of Sverre Uben, Elia Papasena and Shuma Tazaki. Bergstein is swarming all over the uh, back end of the Japanese driver. And manages to try and thread the eye of the needle through on the inside of turn number eight. And Tazaki was sideways going into Piff Path and is losing a lot of momentum. And there were two carts closing right up on him. One of which would have been uh, Tom Vuau, the other one of Marcel Lecri, both from PK's Competition. Mechanical black flag has been, has been now shown to Nicky Gauchi from Malta. He'll be pulling that cart into the pits very shortly. Part of the course just indicates to the 310 from Malta. At the front end of the field, the top four are starting to close up a little bit. It was just over a second between the quartet with Matisse Kamlishak still leading. Second, Uzakovs from Latvia. Third, Scala from the UAE and Savinkov from the United Kingdom. William Christensen and Lukas Schlegel have got company. So it's going to be more than two carts battling over the last two positions as Tito Anliskali tries to go side by side. Went towards the outside of Lukas Schlegel, got through. So Schlegel now drops out of the... Uh, as there's now going to be a bit of a dogfight here. There's Mitch Hainer, two wheels on the grass. Long Noir up the inside. Nagelvoort up the inside. Schlegel is dropping further back down the order. With uh, just about half of this race completed. It's going to be a tall order for the Austrian to muster up something to try and get through. We might lose another position now as they go through into turn number seven. And that was Mitch Hainert making a move on the 362 from Austria. They've got Elia Papasena right with them now. So further changes could be afoot. Papasena has been showing some flashes of pace this weekend, has been competitive. Now he's trying to close down in on the Austrian. Through into clubhouse once again. And the battle that is being led by Tito Aliscali has now got Tom Longwa, Brandon Klein Nagelwort, Sverre Uben in that mix. Mitch Hain has got to make up some ground here in order to catch them. He's currently running P10. Ahead of Lukas Schlegel and Elia Papasena. Papasena launches it up the inside of the Austrian through into turn number seven. Runs a little bit wide, can't get the crossover completed. And Schlegel is back through. Coming up to just under four minutes left to go. Uzakovs is closing in on Kamnijak for the race lead. Christensen has got some daylight at the end at the at both ends of the tunnel, both fore and behind, uh, in front and behind. And he's got a gap of about nine tenths of a second between himself and Tito Anliskeli, but the gap between Christensen and Savinkov is about three seconds. So 21 out of the 22 starters are still running. Black and white warning flag this time going to Tom Longnoir from France in the 927. Coming up to the last three minutes to go. And now Zvede Uben makes another move up the inside that was through onto Dunlop. And Brandon Klein Nagelwort says, No, you don't. Gets straight back past him. Now they're going to be side pod to side pod heading into Clubhouse. And Zvede Uben gets back through. It's the battle for eighth position on the road. With two minutes and 40 seconds still to go. They need to try and get past the cart in front very, very quickly. It was Fede Oven actually pulling a gap on the 393 from the United Kingdom. That's easier said than done. Mitch Haynett sends it up the inside of Brandon Klein Nagelvort again and gets through. So a very, very quick shift in momentum. So two and a quarter minutes still remain on the timer, plus an additional lap. Matisse Kanijak now extends his lead over Gustav Zusakovs to just over eight and a half tenths. 
Dituel Escali is not out of danger quite yet because Tom Longwa is not that far behind. Neither is the likes of Svede Uppen. So things are compacting between sixth to round about 10th position. So any one of five drivers could provisionally book their place into the top 36. And now there is a change a little bit further up as someone's just got off the circuit. That is Tito Aliscali and has just lost out as Mitch Haynes has gone around the outside. Brandon Klein Nagelvort to the inside, heading into turn number eight. This is going to be close. And they both make a little bit of a touch. And those behind managed to profit. Now was one of them. Elia Papasena is the big question here. Papasena was running in 11th position and now is in ninth. Sveta Uben now is battling away with Tom Longois for that sixth position. As Tito Eliscali battling away with uh, Sam Bergstein. That's for 12th place. But the lead that Matis Kanijak over Gustav Zusakovs is now just over a second. The top four are away and clear, but the battle for fifth and sixth is still raging on. Tom Longnois has an opportunity to at least be sixth in this race, might even be as high as fifth position. As we're now heading on to the penultimate lap of this second chance heat for senior Rotax. Svedek Urban is about three tenths in front of, uh, Tito, uh, of uh, uh, Tom Longnois, but Svedek Urban is not satisfied with settling for sixth place because there right in front is RS Competition's William Christiansen. And could the 344 from Belgium get the slingshot down into the double left-hander at turns five and six? Not quite. Timer has expired. And our leader is just about to head to Dunlop for the penultimate time. But fifth and sixth being contested by three respective drivers from, from France, Belgium, and from Denmark. The Dane is leading that in the form of William Christensen. Final lap underway. Matisse Kanajak's lead now extends to one and a half seconds. Battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Getting a bit closer between those in fifth and sixth. So Christensen still holding Svedi Urban at bay. But Longlois wants to get into that top six. Because thereby the 927 will book his place into the top 36. Leader now coming through turn number seven for the final time. As Longnoir looked for a tighter apex through into turn seven to get the carry of momentum through into eight and then into Piff Path. But out of the final corner, Francis Matisse Kanijak takes the win in the senior Rotax second chance heat by just over one and three quarter seconds ahead of Gustav Zuzikovs from Latvia. Zach Scowler and Alexander Savinkov booked their place in the, sec in the top 36, along with provisionally William Christensen and Belgium's Svede Uben in the 344. Tom Longnois rendered out the top seven ahead of Elia Papasena, well, ahead of Mitch Haynett and Elia Papasena with Brandon Klein Nagelvort rounding out the top 10 positions. And they were covered by just under 10 seconds after 13 laps of racing. Tituan Lescali, Sam Bergstein, Lucas Schlegel, Marcel Lecri, and Tom Vuau round at the top 15 positions. Shuma Tazaki, Scott Westhovens, Batty Schneider, Jonathan Devor, and Loris Koisman round at the top 20. Kamal Manad finished in 21st, and unfortunately, with a noisy exhaust, Nicky Gauchi would retire on lap number five.
So that concludes the uh, last chance for those senior road tax drivers to have tried to get themselves promoted into the top 36 at 11.30 this morning. We get underway with the first of three pre-finals as juniors will be front and centre. Then we'll go into the senior road tax pre-final and then before the lunch break, it'll be DD2 and DD2 Masters. The finals themselves will have the parade of the drivers and their carts onto the grids from 2 p.m. this afternoon where the junior final will get underway. 2.25 will be seniors and DD2 Masters will take place at 2.50 p.m., thereby being the last bit of on-track action here at Sacré de Val d'Argentan, here in Western France.
Time to now get underway with the pre-finals. Up first, it's Junior Rotax. Let's have a look at your starting grid. After a clean sweep yesterday, it's Belgium's Mateo Dedenkovic on pole position. Alongside him from the United Kingdom will be Kento Craigie. United Kingdom also occupied the next two rows with Max Cuthbert starting third, Archie Clark fourth, Timo Jungling in fifth and Thomas Behrman in sixth position. Bolowetz and Kasper Schormans line up alongside each other on row number four and completing the top ten, it's Francis Wayan Bourguignon and Latvia's Tom Strela. Lucas Ells and Armand Hamilton on row number six. Row seven, Boris Maximov and Thomas Ingram Hill. Row eight, Thomas Rudokas and Zain El Homosani. Hamza Al Fayez and Tay Stevens round out row nine and completing the top 20 is Antoine Clissel and Olivier Yonkers. Completing the entirety of the 34 strong grid are Julian Kovacevic, Krik Noren, Joshua Graham, Matteo Dovern, Matthias Yellerup, Noah Janssen, Alberto Kiko Fracassi, Kasper Nissen, August Graeber, Ollie Wise, Knut Nielsen, Sky Parker, Ryan Gandor, and Homer Kitzinger. Now the length of the duration of the race has been extended from seven minutes plus an additional lap for the heats yesterday to 11 minutes plus an additional lap for both the pre-final and the final. Temperature has now hit 21 degrees Celsius as the drivers will now start to line up into formation. That's 34 drivers, 17 rows of competitors. Drivers start weaving from side to side, heading through the Piff Paff chicane on the run up to Dunlop at the top right hand corner of the circuit. So it's down to the front row of Radenkovic and Craigie to control the rolling start formation as the last couple of drivers get into position at the back end of the field. We are primed and ready to get the pre finals underway. Are we ready? Are we steady? Revs rise, lights are out first time. And it's down towards Clubhouse. There's some jockeying for position. As Max Cuthbert looks up the inside of Kenzo Craigie, who runs a little bit wide through Clubhouse. Kenzo Craigie has just bumped over the coast coming out of the exit and has lost a couple more positions. He's got Archie Clark right behind him. It's too wide coming out of turn number three. Up towards the back stretch for the first time. And Radenkovic has got Cuthbert right behind him. Kasper Schulmans has made his way up into P5. As Bolowet looks up the inside through into turn number six. Through into the left-hander here at seven for, for this uh, very curved left-hand corner here at turn eight leading into the Piff Paff chicane. Move from Hamza Al Fayez to make a place through turn eight. As we're on course to completing our opening lap of racing. Everyone has made it through so far. Radenkovic leads, but not by much. It's 0.125 between him and Max Cuthbert. Timo Jungling and Thomas Behrman round out the top four, followed by Kasper Schormans, who completes the top five as they head into turn number three. Kenzo Craigie holding on to six. Archie Clark in seventh, Bolowet in eighth place. Some positions gained by Thomas Ingram Hill who started 14th, Zainel, uh, who's now 11th and uh, now 12th position, is in the hands of the UAE's Zainel Homosani from the Yaz Heat Racing Academy. He's moved up from 16th on the grid to 12th place. There's more battling for positions through the turn seven left-hander. Archie Clark was in the middle of that melee. As it's three wide and we've had an incident at the back end of the field. And could Nielsen went skyward with the front axle up into the air as it was three abreast coming out of the corner. But Radenkovic continues to lead ahead of Cuthbert going on to lap number three. Kenzo Craigie has just set the fastest lap of the race of 53.2 second flat lap time. Behrman and Jungling, fourth and third respectively, are closing in on the race leaders. Changes happening. That, I think that might have been Matteo Deverne that's just uh, been overtaken by at least two, maybe make that three carts as they go down the back straightaway. Thomas Behrman looking up the inside of Timo Jungling, who's now clipped the grass going into turn eight. Craigie is with them. Behrman's through for third, and Craigie takes the full advantage of the opportunity presented to him to get through into fourth place. And now goes through Dunlop and overtakes Behrman for third. 
But it's still at the front end of the field. It's Redenkovic versus Cuthbert. Craigie now has Berman up the inside of the tangle going into clubhouse and Craigie off, but he manages to light up the rear tyres, having skidded into the gravel and rejoins. And he's been passed by quite a lot of the field on the approach in towards turn number three. That has now promoted Casper Shawmans up into what is now fourth place. He's got Archie Clark right behind him along with Bolouette. And Clark looks for the move up the inside, gets through, runs a little bit wide. Shawmans tries to keep it pinned to the inside of the next corner. Can't get the job done. So at the moment, as they complete lap number four, it's Radenkovic, Cuthbert. Behrman, Clark, Shawman, Slowet up into sixth place, Jungling down to seventh, Borguino, Thomas Ingram Hill, and Armand Hamilton complete the top ten. As there's more battling happening a little bit further back behind the top few drivers as they go through into, as that was a move by Armand Hamilton on Thomas Ingram Hill. And there is Hamza Al Fayez. Looking towards the inside of Timo Jungling going into turns five and six. Oh, wheel on the dirt by Thomas Ingram Hill. He rejoins, has a slight touch with Hamza Al Fayez, and the 228 loses more positions. There's Josh Graham going around the outside of him through turn number seven. Tay Stevens also getting past. Zenil Homosani nearly getting the chicane slightly wrong going through Piff Path. As more contretemps happening up and down the order mainly towards the back part of the field now as well. But Radenkovic is only just over two tenths of a second ahead of Max Cuthbert. And they have a gap of just over a second from Thomas Behrman from the United Kingdom. Archie Clark and Kasper Shawmans continue to round up the top five. Kasper Nissen gets past Oli Wise for 28th. Julian Kovacevic has dropped all the way down to 27th position, having started 21st. Sky Parker has made some inroads. She's up now into 21st position from the th from 32nd place. So on the outside of the penultimate row of the grid. But still, Radenkovic continues to lead. Kasper has uh, now uh, Max Cuthbert looks for the move up the inside through into clubhouse. The 234 from the United Kingdom gets through and now takes the lead on lap number seven, but Radenkovic counter-attacks straight away through turn three. The Bubin power driver representing Belgium in the 296 was ruthless with that maneuver and made sure it worked. A good fair exchange between the two at the sharp end of the grid, but both Behrman and Clark are giving chase. Clark has set the fastest lap of this race so far, 52.795, but there has been a change between Hayan Bourguignon and Armand Hamilton with the 2.12 now going up into seventh place as they head through into the chicane and up towards Dunlop once again. The gap between second and third position was just over 1.1 seconds. It's now dropped to 0.914. Bolouet has just put in the fastest lap of the race in fifth position. 52.760, he's closing in on the two in front of Clark and Behrman. Timur Jungling and Hamza al Fayez are battling away over ninth place. They're not too far apart with the Jordanian holding station, but waiting for the opportunity to get through, trying to make it a clean pass. Jungling and Al Fayez are catching Bourguino and Hamilton. Cuthbert has been running slightly slower than Radenkovic in terms of optimal lap time. And now they go into the 52s, 52.775 by the race leader, 52.840 by Cuthbert. Now into turn three, they go once again. That gap looks to be slightly extending between the top two. Bolouet has not been hanging around. He's just been in another successive fastest lap of this race, 52.667 by the 224 from Belgium. And he's really closing in on both Clark and Behrman. 
to round out the top four positions. Bevan in third, Clark in fourth. Casper Shawmans is also trying to make some headway as he just put in a 52.9 on his last lap. Coming up to eight minutes completed, three to go, plus an additional lap. And the gap further extends between the top two. It's now a quarter of a second. Behrman, on that particular occasion, was slightly slower than the two leaders. Joshua Graham at the moment uh, started down in 23rd position. He's now up into 14th. And he's right behind Zen El Homosani. And they've also got Olivier Yonkers in the 2 1 6 from Belgium, not too far behind either. Leaders now making their way through into turn eight before the fifth pass chicane. Bolouette has already dispatched with Archie Clark in the meantime and now is up to fourth. So he has the pace. He was actually nearly two tenths of a second quicker than both Behrman and Clark on that previous lap. Just coming up to two minutes to go. And Loet is getting closer and closer to Thomas Behrman for that third place into turn three. Looks like whatever changes have been made to get the cart set up right for Bolouet. Yesterday, he made a very, very significant impression, as if to say, well, it's the what-if situation that could have happened had I not had been uh, excluded post-qualifying, but he's making, more, he's making more than amends for it now. Those three battling over third position, Behrman, Lewitt and Clark won't be that far adrift of each other, They're covered by just over half a second. On the previous lap, Kento Craigie now recovering up to 17th as Behrman goes defensive on Louette, who looks for the crisscross, gets up the inside, a little bit of a touch between the pair, and Louette gets through. A little bit further behind, Armand Hamilton has just gone toe to toe with Casper Schormans, and Hamilton gets through on the 2 4 0 from the Netherlands. Thomas Ingram Hill now up into 18th, August Rebbe now up into 21st. Kovacevic up to 27th as Shawmans is trying to keep pace with Armand Hamilton in the 2.12 from Strawberry Racing. They've got behind them Hamza Al Fayez, who's overtaken Timo Jungling. So they've swapped places. That's a change for eighth. Coming on to the penultimate lap of the Junior Rotax pre final. And Radenkovic is again trying to stretch that lead. Now just over four tenths. And Bolouet holds on to third for the minute. He's got the two KR Sport drivers in the form of Thomas Behrman and Archie Clark not that far behind. Al Fayez is closing in on Shawmans in the meantime as the timer hits zero. We'll have one more lap to go after this. But Cuthbert has tried to keep pace all the while with Mateo Radenkovic. Al Fayez is starting to line up a, manu a manoeuvre on Kasper Schormans, who goes defensive into Dunlop. Al Fayez tries to get the momentum carry out of Dunlop. He's gone right up the rear bumper on Schormans as they head on to the final lap of the race. And Jungling is there. He's sweeping to the outside of Clubhouse, trying to carry the momentum through and get a bit more exit speed out of turn number two. But Mateo Radenkovic did have a little bit of early pressure from Max Cuthbert and continues his way at leading at the front end of the field. Alfa is now having to defend from Timo Jungling as they head towards Dunlop for the final time here on lap number 14. The 100% winning streak continues here in Western France as Mateo Radenkovic wins the Junior Rotax pre-final by over half a second in front of Max Cuthbert. Bolouet takes third, Thomas Behrman fourth, Archie Clark rounds out the top five, followed by Armand Hamilton, Kasper Schormans, 
Hamza al is making his way from 17th to 8th ahead of Timo Jungling and Ryan Borgrino, who round out the top 10 positions. Lucas Sell, Tom Strelet, Zain El Homosani, Joshua Graham, and Olivier Yonkers ran at the top 15. Kenzo Craigie, after that moment earlier on in the race, after an incident between himself and Thomas Behrman, recovers to finish in 16th place. Ahead of Dave Stevens, Thomas Ingram Hill, Boris Maximov, and August Reber, who round out the top 20. Crick Noren would finish 21st, ahead of Germany's Noah Janssen, with Anton Cusel, Alberto Kiko Fracassi, and Oli Wise rounding out the top 25. Julian Kovacevic, Matteo Devon, Sky Parker, Kasper Nissen, Ryan Gandor, Thomas Rudokas, uh, Matthias Jerrup and Knud Nielsen round out the 33 on the grid with Roman Kitzinger completing the 34 drivers that all finished every single, four, uh, every single one of the 14 laps of racing.
Now we get underway with the senior Rotax pre-final here at Val d'Argentan, and here is your starting grid. So after three wins yesterday, Mark Kimber in the 302 starts from pole position. He'll have the defending champion Sean Butcher alongside him on the front row. Kai Hunter and Lachlan Robinson round out row two. Then it's Kai Hillitz and Ethan Jeff Hall on row number three. Devin Rost and Austin Lee ran out the top four rows with Miska Kaskinen and Camille McFarlane rounding out the top ten. Paul Fourquemin and Jaden Teen on row number six ahead of Nolan Emery and Lilian Richard. Matthew Higgins and Zombor Kovac complete row number eight. Row nine, it's Lewis Gilbert and Dion van Verven with Vic Stevens and Tommy van der Sloes completing the top 20. Arthur Robin, Yannis Diak, Laurent Ligot, Daniel Hausworth, Paul Grissel, Lotus Sveen, Jules Roussel, Tobias Clausen, Montego Marston round out the uh, top 29. Then we have got uh, the likes of uh, Elia Papas. Well, we've got Matis Kanajak, Gustav Sulsakovs, Zach Scala, Alexander Savinkov, Svede Urban. And we've also got Magic Hamera out on the grid as well. So 36 senior Rotax drivers about to go into battle for 14 minutes, plus an additional lap around this 1,280 metre circuit. So the drivers now slowing to a crawl as they'll get into formation. And the result of every pre-final here today will decide the grids for the respective finals, which kickstart at 2 p.m. local time here in France. So your top ten, it's Kimber, Butcher, Hunter, Robinson, Rillets, Jeff Hall, Rust, Lee, Kaskinen and McFarlane. 14 minutes on the timer. Red lights on the gantry. Drivers now heading into the 12th and final corner. Are we ready? Are we steady? Revs rise. Lights are out first time. Good start by both Kimber and Hunter as they go into clubhouse for the first time. Butcher trying to keep it pinned to the outside. Heading out of the corner. And he goes over the curbs and also onto the grass. And we've got more dramas. Someone's lost their front bumper in the meantime coming out of clubhouse. And that is... The 316 of Zach Scowler. So his front fairing is not on the cast anymore, I'm afraid. He'll have to pull that straight into the pits and he'll have to start from the back of the grid for the final later on. But the, the front of the field, it is line astern between the top four. Kimber leads the way. Hunter in second. We've got third and fourth, which looks to be more than likely Kai Hillitz and Austin Lee as they come out of the final corner. It's Ethan Jeff Hall in fourth. Sean Butcher in fifth. Six, it's Paul Forquemin who's got past Lachlan Robinson. Devian Horst, Miska Kaskinen and Austin Lee ran out the top ten. Austin Lee started down in eighth position. And no surprise, the mechanical black flag being shown to Zach Scowler for the front fairing no longer being attached to the vehicle. As all dive up the inside from Ethan Jeff Hall on Kai Hunter, and that allows Sean Butcher to get through at turn six. But Kimber starting to try and eke out a little bit of an advantage. Kai Hillitz has got through on Kai Hunter for second place as they head back up to Dunlop once again as we're about to complete lap number two. Looks like Zombor Kovac was trying to get through on Matthew Higgins through Dunlop. As Kimber continues to lead. Three tenths is the gap between him and Hillitz. Lachlan Robinson just puts in the fastest lap of the race. 52.184 seconds. And between the top 16, rounded out by Zombor Kovac, it's 3.6 seconds covering them all. As they go down the back straightaway into turns five and six. Kimber from Hillitz. Hunter from Butcher. Robinson looking to try and put the frightness onto Paul Fokwemin. Uh, That's easier said than done. But the 3.26 from KR Sport has got Devin Rost right with him. 
Miska Kaskinen has uh, dropped all the way down to 12th position here in the pre-final. So hopefully the Finn can make a couple of moves and get himself into the top 10. If he can get himself into ninth, he'll be in the optimum racing line for the start for the pre-final. Gap now extending as Lachlan Robinson sends it up the inside. Through on Paul Fulquimin, going through into turn number three and retakes sixth place. Butcher, in the meantime, is catching those in front. He's just gone sub-52 on the previous lap. 51.995 seconds by the 301 based out of London. Closing in on the 395, Sunderland's finest, Mr. Kai Hunter for Dan Holland Racing, holding on to third at the minute. As they come down to complete their fourth lap of this 14 minute plus an additional lap race. Did see some movement a little bit further back. I think Lauren Legault just got past Dion van Verven going through into Dunlop, which is the case. And van Verven is in the middle of a KR Sports sandwich going into Clubhouse. He's got Legault in front of him, Houseworth behind. So Lachlan Robinson now trying to chase after Ethan Jeff Hall for fifth position. The gap between Butcher and Jeff Hall last time around was just over six tenths of a second. Robinson's last lap was a 52-3. Ethan Jeff, Hall, Jeff Hall's was also a 52-3. Another 326. Is he going to look for the move up the inside through Dunlop for fifth place? No, he's not. He's going to try and carry the momentum through the final right-hander right here at this circuit. They're pushing north of 115 kph. And now the move is going to be happening. Robinson through for Quemin through on Ethan Jeff Hall, who drops from fifth to seventh at the drop of a hat. Meanwhile, Butcher's battling away. And he's just got through on Kai Hunter through the inside of turn number five. Now that's the change for third place. Ethan Jeff Hall now has got Devin Horst and Austin Lee behind him. Bearing in mind that those three drivers that I've just mentioned uh, were competing in juniors. So eight minutes and 52 seconds on the timer, plus an additional lap of racing. And the lead has started to extend ever so slightly. Jules Roussel, in the meantime, currently sitting in 26 position, puts in the fastest lap of the race of 51.9. 30 thousandths quicker than the race leader himself, Mark Kimber. So now that Lachlan Robinson has got some clear air behind him, he's got some clear air in front, he can start chasing down the quartet ahead of him. Rounded out by the 395 of Kai Hunter. A little bit further back, there has been a change of position. And that was courtesy of Austin Lee on Divian Hus going through into turn seven. As all, there's been a bit of a bump and a touch between Tommy van der Soys and Laurent Ligor going through into turn number eight. Battling for round about the bottom part of the top 20. Lead still further extends to just under seven and a half tenths between Kimba and Gilatz. Down the back straight away, that gap looks to be further expanding between the top two. And Sean Butcher is trying to close in on Kai Gilatz. He was fractionally quicker, a 51.979 from Butcher. Last time, around 52.065 by Rilatz. Which was about the best part of nine-tenths of a second. It's a little bit further back. Camille McFarlane is having a battle of her own to deal with. She's currently running at the top 14 behind Zombor Kovac. Lead now extends to nearly nine-tenths as Butcher closes in once again on Kai Rilatz was half a tenth quicker than the 16-year-old from Tremolo in Belgium. Tobias Clausen has dropped all the way down to 33rd position behind Magic Hermeda and Svere Uben. Paul Grisel rounds out the top 30. Rounding out the top 20 is Linia Richard in the number 384. 
Zomor Kovac is making some progress as well. Had a quick chat with the Hungarian this morning. He said, well, I'm going to try and make the best of a difficult situation. Well, he's closing in on Miska Kaskinen, having gotten past Jaden Teen. Lewis Gilbert and Matthew Higgins round out the top 15 as again the gap extends. And it's now north of a second between Kimba and Gilertz. Once again, Sean Butcher was about 73 thousandths of a second quicker. There is now a change. That is the 9.05 of Nona Lemare passed through on Devian Horst, who's now got Miska Kaskinen for close company heading into turn four. The Finn dives up the inside. And Devian Horst runs wide. That allows also Zombor Kovac uh, to get through in the meantime in the 341 from Hungary. As now it's getting to be a bit close between the likes of Horst, Kaskinen and Kovac. Lewis Gilbert is right there in the mix. So is Matty Higgins. And there's the move from Kovac to go up the inside of Kaskinen through into Dunlop corner. They're push, as I said, they're pushing north of 110, 115 kph. I've even heard speeds of over 120 going down into clubhouse before the breaking zone. Lewis Gilbert trying to get through on Jaden Teen. But Matthew Higgins is looking up the inside of the Scotsman through into turn three and he gets through. So the 375 from Trafalgar in Wales gets through on the 329 from Dalry in, in Ayrshire in Scotland. Four and three quarter minutes still remain. The gap is extending every single lap between Mark Kimber and Kai Hillets. Movers in the, uh, in the field at the moment. Vic Stevens up to 16th. And it's closing in on Matthew Higgins and set, well, what will be now Lewis Gilbert. Sverdik Oven up to 30th. Matisse Karnijak 27th. Lap number 11 completed and we have four minutes and 20 still to go. Jules Roussel still holds on to the fastest lap of the race. As up the inside of the 397 of Ethan Jeff Hall goes Nolan Emery from France. As all, someone's just had a bit of an off track moment. That was Camille McFarlane in the 328. So now he's got Yanis Diak and there was a little bit of a near touch behind between a couple of the carts. Now it's nearly three abreast going in. That's Tommy van der Stoys. That's Lewis Gilbert up the inside of the 328, going through into turns five and six. It's nearly three abreast coming down the back stretch. More side by side action. There's Dion van Verven in the thick of things. Along with that will be Laurent Legault in the 323. KR Sport driver based out of Montreal. Three and a half minutes still to go. And Kimber's expanded his lead to nearly a second and a half. And Nolan Emre is putting in personal bests. And is trying to close in on the likes of Austin Lee. Meanwhile, Sean Butcher is pretty close now to Kai Hillertz. The gap between them after the last lap was just over two tenths of a second. But Kimber has been, run, has been going quicker than the two behind him. Lachlan Robinson and Kai Hunter seem to be very much matched on pace. So Dion van Verven finds himself in 27th position. Lewis Gilbert and Camille McFarlane round out the top 20. As Kimber is nigh on breaking into one and a half second advantage over Kai Hillertz. Butcher is trying to put the pressure onto Hillertz at this moment in time for second position on the road. Behind Lachlan Robinson, you've got the battle between Paul Fulquimin, Austin Lee, and the fiercely forward charging Nolan Lemahe in the 905, running with Morgan Riche's team, RM Concept. And Lee defends going into turns five and six. Lemahe not able to facilitate a move past him. Coming down to the final two minutes, plus an additional lap. The way that Kimber has just controlled proceedings, he's kept a hold of the lead from pole position and has not really had to look back that often. So we're on to lap number 15 of this race. And Nolan Emery trying to keep Austin Lee from trying to get past him. 
Butcher is holding station in third place behind Kai Rillertz. As we have seen over the course of this race weekend here at Val d'Argentan, you're better placed on the inside row, or the inside line on the grid going into the rolling start. Paul Fourquemin has got to watch himself now because Nolan Lemare, who's up into seventh, has been catching. Phillips takes a quick glance over his right shoulder, not just once, but twice, coming down the start finish straight to see where Butcher is. As we head into the final 45 seconds, Nolan Lemare was just under two tenths behind Paul Fourquemin. And the 904. As they go down the back straightaway, leaders are just making their way through into turn seven. And as I say that, Mark Kimber exits the corner. As Lemare dive bombs up the inside of Paul Fulquemin through into turn seven, and Fulquemin is right back at him. And they exchange briefly, and Lemare gets through. Austin Lee still is not too far away from that battle. We're now going on to our penultimate lap. Lap number 17 out of 18. The timer hits zero now. We had a couple of warning boards shown. One to Dion van Verven and one to Laurent Ligor a little bit earlier on in the race. But Austin Lee now finds himself with Paul Fulquemin and Nolan Lemare. This is the three-way scrap over sixth position. As our leader makes his way through into turn seven for the final time, well, for what will be the penultimate time. It's been a calm and measured performance by quite a few of the drivers, mainly the top three. As this time around, Mark Kimber will see the last lap board here in the pre-final. His gap was 2.2 seconds last time around, it's now 2.3. Butcher is within two tenths of Kai Hillertz, but is opting to, you know, use this as a bit of a strategy call. A little bit further back, Jay, uh, I've just seen that Jaden Teen had the likes of Tommy van der Soys, Otto Hobart and Yannick Stiak try and flood their way past. And there's an absolute skirmish happening into turn number three. Van der Soys hung out wide, coming through that corner. And that was for around about 16th position. But our leader makes his way through into Dunlop for what is going to be the 18th and final time. As now Butcher getting very, very close to Hillertz. But here comes Kai Hunter. He was trying to look up the inside. Kimber takes the win. Continues his win streak here in France. Hillertz takes second. Butcher takes third. Hunter fourth. Robinson fifth. Lemare takes sixth position. Having started 13th, ahead of Paul Fulquemin, Austin Lee in 8th, Ethan Jeff Hall and Zombor Kovac complete the top 10. 11th was Divian Horst, Miska Kaskinen finished 12th ahead of DHR teammate 15. Jules Roussel, Jaden Teen, Lewis Gilbert, Tommy van der Soys, Yanis Diak ran at the top 20. Laurent Lego, Camille McFarlane, Daniel Halsworth, Matisse Kanejak, Dion van Verven, Sverre Uppen, Gustav Zusakovs, Lotus Tween, Montigo Masson, and Paul Crisel round out the top 30 with Magic Himera, Hilian Richard, Alexander Savinkov, William Christensen, and Tobias Clausen rounding out the top 35. All drivers finished all eight la 18 laps of racing, with Zach Scowler unfortunately losing his front fairing on lap two and thereby retiring.
So time for our last pre-final of round two of the 2023 Rotax Max Challenge Euro Trophy is DD2 and DD2 Masters, the pre-final. Here is your starting grid. On pole position from the Netherlands, it's going to be Martin van Leeuwen. Alongside him will be Carl Gustav Wolgaard, who took pole position in time qualifying on Friday afternoon. David Altleishner will be paired with Maxim Didix on road two. And it's the SP Motorsport Giro of Enzo Boll and Leonardo Baccaglini on row three. Or row, row three. Villa Villainen and Victor Frostbait, row four. Then it's Axel Sarniala and Nicola Guillaume, okay, to his friends, known as Uno Mas. They ran out the top ten. Lucas Pernod starts 11th, head of Mads Ries. Maxim Schurko, Rasmus van der Patrick Snolls, Loch Mellis, ran out the top 15. Rounding out the top 20, it's Manuel Tenchat. Philip Moitzi, Martin Astankiewicz, Kilian Geha, and Jakub Bezel. Denis Thum, Nicolas Picot, Christophe Capitan, Michael Becker, Tim Stippitz, Peter Bezel, Jules Cousin, Tony Hogg, Igor Mukin, Sebastian Schuh, Mats Johan Overhoff, and Jimmy Chaumier ran out the 32 strong grid. Interestingly enough, I actually had a chat with Mats Johan Overhoff uh, this morning after morning warm up, and I asked him, uh, what, how fast were you going when you had the incident? And he said, uh, I was doing about 120 kilometers an hour. That's 75 miles an hour for those uh, wondering what that converts into miles an hour before hitting the tie barriers hard. Um, but he said, well, I'm going to just make the best of it. This is just a learning experience for me. This is my first year in DD2, so we'll see how he gets on over the next 14 minutes plus an additional lap. The red lights are on the starting gantry. The timer is set. So yesterday's final heat saw some fantastic close quarter racing action and epitomizes DD2 and DD2 Masters at its very, very best. But it's going to be down to Van Leeuwen and Carl Gustav Borgard to control the pace. They are crawling their way through into the final turn. Are we ready? Are we steady? Revs rise. Lights are out first time. We are underway in the DD2 and Masters pre-final. Good start by Martin Van Leeuwen, the pole sitter. He's being followed by David Altleishner. And Enzo Boll looks to have got himself up into third position. Oh, there's a bit of a touch between Maxim Dirix. That was one of the uh, RS competition carts. More than likely, Vili Viliainen. Down onto the back stretch they go for the first time. And the top three have sprinted away very, very quickly. Altleishner behind Van Leeuwen from the Netherlands. Enzo Boll rounding out the top three. It's nearly two, three abreast coming out of turn five and into turn six. Now into the hairpin at seven. Through the sweeper at eight. They head down into Dunlop and there's a couple of carts off. Oh, dearie me. That is one of them is Mads Ries. The other one is Patrick Snolls Loch Mellis. But the top three have stolen a march on the opposition. And they are covered by just under three and a half tenths. So further seven and a half tenths back to fourth position, occupied by Carl Gustav Borgard. Maxim Dirix in fifth, Vili Viliainen, Leonardo Baccaglini, Axel Sarniala, Maxim Schurko. And there is a little bit of a scrap at its own right at the back of it, Leonardo Baccaglini. Looks to be behind. I think that is Carl Gustav Borgard. As Enzo Boll fires it up the inside, through on David Altleishner, through at turn seven. That's given Martin van Leeuwen a little bit of a springboard of opportunity in terms of leading the race. They were line astern across the line by, and it was 0.345 of a second between the trio. And now van Leeuwen has got clean air in front and behind him. But now it's down to Boll and Altleishner. They've got to start to reel in. The driver based out of Zolder, the 403. Van Leeuwen sets the fastest lap of the race on lap two, 52.034. As drivers mounting the curves, that was Axel Sarniala. He has the 421 of Austria's Philip Moitzi also having gone through. Lucas Peno is trying to get through as well. That's on Victor Frost Bay. Nicola Picot in the 517. 
left side pod on the cart, very, very nicely scuffed by the uh, numbering on the latter part of the side pod itself. Some overtakes happening through into Dunlop. Looks to be maybe one of the bezels made a move. That could have been Jakob Bezel on Kylian Gerhardt. But in the meantime, Enzo Boll has got past David Altleishner. But Van Leeuwen has again set another successive fastest lap of the race. He's gone over two tenths quicker. That's 51.811 by the 403 running with Shepherds Racing. The Dix is holding Vili Viljainen at bay for fourth place. Six, it's Maxim Shurko from Lithuania. Seventh is Bakaglini. Carl Gustav Borgard is ahead of Axel Sarniala, who in turn has got Philip Moitzi and Victor Frost Bay just behind. They're rounding out the top 11 positions. Nicola Pico is leading the way in DD2 Masters. He's currently 14th and climbing. And he's just three tenths behind. Manuel Tenchert from Austria. Well, that's all changed because Manuel Tenchert apparently has dropped quite considerably down the order. But at the front of the field, Van Leeuwen just trying to stretch a little bit of an advantage. And he's got that advantage up to nearly eight tenths. Maxim Shurko, however, in sixth place, has just put in the fastest lap the race and he's just gone up the inside of Vili Viliainen through turn number seven to take fifth place from the Finn. A 51.55 for the 435 running with the uh, Birolart Lithuanian squad run by one of the drivers in this field Martina Stankiewicz who currently runs in 19th position he's third in DD2 Masters A little bit further back, there's a good battle with Lucas Pernau, who's now slingshotted up the inside through turn number three. Robustly makes his way past Carl Gustav Borgard. And Philip Moitzi goes round the outside through into turn number four on the 437 from Denmark. There's also Philip uh, Victor Frostbay in the 414, not too far behind his teammates at RS Competition. Pico is not too far adrift either. Frost Bay tries to get through on Borgard. Going through into turn number eight. Can't get through. All 32 drivers are still running. Lok Chmelis and Ries rounding out the 32 strong as an attempt. That's by Shurko on Maxim Dirix. That is the battle for fourth position. Shurko last time was over a tenth quicker. Then the Belgian in front, and now he slingshots up the inside through into turn number four. That is now a change for fourth position. And Maxim Dirich says, no, you don't. I'm going to go up the inside through on turn five. Has to back out of it halfway through the corner. And that's going to allow both Vili Viliainen and Leonardo Bacaglini. But in the meantime, up the inside on, that was more than likely, Axel Sarniala, Lucas Perno. He's taken a page out of Sean Butcher because both he and Sean are wearing white race suits in the Chaos Sport crew, and so is Judy Rotax driver in that team, Canada's Ryan Gandor. Seven minutes and 50 still to go. Van Leeuwen extends his gap to 1.735 seconds over Enzo Boll. David Outlation rounds out the top three, but keep your eyes on the driver in fourth representing Lithuania, Maxim Shurko. Maxim Dirix rounds out the top five. He's ahead of Vili Viliainen and Leonardo Vacaglini. Lucas Perno, he's just put in the fastest lap, a, a personal best. He's running in the 51 sevens. So Lucas Perno up to eighth. Can he climb any higher in the next seven minutes and 10 seconds? Lap eight completed. Van Leeuwen continues to lead. There is a change up at Dunlop. There has been an exchange of position. So Maxim Dirich still is keeping ahead of Vili Viliainen and Leonardo Bacaglini. As Maxim Shurko 
was a significant amount quicker than the guy in front of him. David Altleishner has got Lithuania right behind him. And he looks up the inside. The 4.35 gets through. That's third place. Third place for Maxim Shurko, who started all the way down in 13th and now has a real, real opportunity to close on in on Enzo Boll for second in this race. And what's more, they are two of the youngest drivers in the field. Youngest is 14. Eldest is going to be 29 years of age. So Maxim Shurko showcasing that he can make the transition, jump from juniors to DD2 and make an instant impact. And so Boll is going to have to watch himself very closely. He's going to watch his, watch his rear bumper because Shurko is hunting him down a little bit further back. Pernod makes up another position and he's right on the tail of Bakaglini. They both got past Villian and Shurko up the inside through Dunlop on Enzo Boll. Now the run through the fast right-hander at turn 12 at over 115 kph. Martin Van Leeuwen has checked out with five minutes and 10 seconds still to go. He's got a lead of 2.9 seconds. But my question is this, how much of that gap can Maxim Shurko close up? He's already started stretching away from Enzo Boll, such as the pace of the chassis, the Birrell ART underneath him. As soon as he's got past somebody, he started leading them in his dust trails. Bacaglini and Pernod are very, very closely contesting each, uh, each other's <laughs> super, well, superiority on this circuit. And at the moment, it looks to be in the hands of Lucas Pernod because Pernod now up into sixth position. Pono didn't have a good run in qualification. Now the biggest thing is Pono started 11th and now he's gunning for the top five because right in front of him is Belgium's Maxime Didix. And the pace that Maxime Scherko is showing is quite significant. We have got a cart off to the left-hand side of turns five and six. Driver is walking away. Can't make out the number from here. Asmus Vandelbo looks to have uh, retired early from the race. But the battle for fifth place now starts. Lucas Pernod right on the coattails of Maxim Dirix, but along with the Canadian is coming along Italy's Leonardo Bacaglini and the two flying fins behind. Vili Viliainen and Axel Sarniala. Down the back straight away, Lucas Pernod puts the throttle down and he just launches the cart forward. Dirix is fending off Pernod as if his life depends on it. And manages to shut the door going through into turns five and six. It's under three minutes to go, plus an additional lap. And the gap between Martin Van Leeuwen and Maxim Scherko last time around was two and three quarter seconds. Pernod still trying to get through on Maxim Didix for fifth place, but the gap is extended between the pair. Van Leeuwen and Scherko were matched on pace, literally two, within two one thousandths of each other. Sarniola now ahead of countryman Vili Ainen. There's Pernod looking to try and get the title line coming out of turn number four. Is he going to get the run on the Belgian going through into turn five? No, he does not. So Manuel Tenchet and Hasmus Vendelbo both out of the race as Vendelbo out on lap seven. Tenchet out just a couple of laps ago. But Pernod is trying everything in his playbook to get past Maxim Dirix, and at the moment it's not working. Shurko takes a mere fraction out of the lead from Van Leeuwen as it's just over 2.7 seconds. 
fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And may or maybe make that ninth, battling away over P5. But it seems to be a bit more close between Didix, Pano, and Bacaglini. Saniola is starting to catch them up again. So the pendulum swings from one side to the other once more. Thirty out of thirty-two drivers still running. That's complete. Lap number fifteen as our leader crosses the start finish line. Shirko in second. Van Leeuwen sets the personal best. Shirko slightly fractionally slower. Pernod right on the back bumper of Maxime Didix going through into clubhouse at turn number two. The Canadian unable to get his way past so far in this race this might give him an opportunity if he can get past for fifth he's going to go for the move he's up the inside and he's through before they hit the apex at turn five great work there by Lucas Pano to slingshot past Maxime Dirix 20 seconds remain on the timer as our leader comes out of Dunlop so Van Leeuwen completes lap number 16 two to go Pano now starting to stretch his advantage over Maxim Didix. Leonardo Bacaglini has an opportunity to get himself past the Belgian. Saniola and Villainen still very much keeping in proximity to those in front. As the timer expired just around about 20 seconds ago, leader making his way through turn number seven. For what's going to be the penultimate time on lap number 17 out of 18. Shuriko has done himself the biggest favour in the world by getting through on everybody else and now has pulled clear of third place driver Enzo Bold to the tune of 2.3 seconds. Final lap underway. Pono has a big old gap ahead of Maxim Dirix, which has now stretched to just over seven and a half tenths of a second. And what's more, Lucas Pernod just set a lap time that was just a tenth behind. The fastest lap of this race carried out by Maxim Shuriko, who's in second at the moment. Mads Lees looks to have parked the 486, so the Danes pre-final comes to an early end on lap number 16. But it's this driver here, Martin van Leeuwen from the Netherlands, based out of Zolder. 24 years of age, the 2021 Rotax Max Challenge Euro Golden Trophy winner that booked his place to Bahrain the same year that Morgan Riche did. And he comes across the line to take the chequered flag with a commanding victory of just under 2.8 seconds. Maxim Shurko for Lithuania takes second. Third, it's Enzo Boll. David Outleishner and uh, rounds out the top four and rounding out the top five. What a run by Canada's Lucas Brano to take fifth place having started down in 11th. Maxim Dirix fended off Perno as much as he could, but would end up sixth ahead of Axel Sarniala, Leonardo Bacaglini, Vili Viliainen, and Austria's Philip Moitzi, who completes the top 10. Victor Frost Bay was 11th ahead of Jakob and Peter Bezel, with Nicola Pico taking the win in DD2 Masters in 14th ahead of the, the uh, triple four of Kylian Geha. Carl Gustav Borgard, Dennis Thum, Mats Johan Overhoff, Martin Astankiewicz, and Jules Cousin round out the top 20. Dennis Thum taking second in DD2 Masters, Tankiewicz third in Masters. And rounding out the grid, Tim Stippitz, Nicolas Guillaume, Michael Becker, Christophe Capitain, Jimmy Chaumier, Tony Hogg, Patrick Snolls, Lochmelis, and Igor Mukin, the latter representing Cyprus in the 523. On lap 16, Mads Ries retired from the race. On lap 10, it was manual, manual attention. And on lap 6, Denmark's Rasmus van der Boe's race would come to a premature end.
So that concludes the morning action here at Circuit du Val d'Argentan in Western France for the finals day for the second round of the 2023 Rotax Max Challenge Euro Trophy. The finals get underway at two o'clock this afternoon where the drivers and their mechanics will head onto the grid as it's the traditional customary parade for the finals every single time we go racing. So we're now gonna go onto the official lunch break and we'll be back just before two o'clock this afternoon to kickstart the first of three finals here in Western France.
Welcome back, everybody. It is time for the first of three finals coming up very, very shortly with the Junior Rotax ranks due to go out first for their 11 minute plus an additional lap final. And then at 14.25, we'll have the Senior Rotax drivers out for their final. And following up that and finishing off the action here at Val d'Argentan will be at 14.50 for DD2 and DD2 Masters. Let's take you through the starting grid of the Junior Rotax final here at Val d'Argentan. On pole position, it's going to be Matej Radenkovic, who's had a 100% success rate so far this weekend. He's joined on the front row by Max Cuthbert from the United Kingdom. It's Belgium and the UK again on row number two, courtesy of Bolouet and Thomas Behrman. Archie Clark and Armand Hamilton, representing the UK and Hungary, ran at row three. With the Netherlands, Kasper Schormans and Jordan's Hamza Alfayez on row four, with Timo Jungling and Ryan Bourguignon rounding out the top ten. Lucas Sells and Tom Strela on row six, Zane El Homosani and Joshua Graham on row seven, Olivia Yonkers and Kenzo Craigie, row eight, row nine, Thomas Ingram Hill and Boris Maximov, with August Reber and Crick Knorren rounding out the top twenty. Completing the 34 strong grid are Noah Janssen, Antoine Grissel, Alberto Kiko Fracassi, Oli Wise, Gillian Kovacevic, Dave Stevens, Kasper Nissen, Ryan Gandor, Thomas Rudokas, Matteo Dovan, Sky Parker, Knud Nielsen, Matthias Jellerup, and Roma Kitzinger. So the drivers coming towards the final few moments of their formation lap here at this 1,280 metre circuit. Rodenkovic has been the one to beat this weekend, but can anyone break his success rate so far here in Western France? There's a whole host of talents behind the 296. from Bouvin Power. Radenkovic and Cuthbert on the front row. Rounding out the top 10, it's Loetz, Behrman, Clark, Hamilton, Shawmans, Alfayez, Jungling, and Bourguignon. Are we ready? Are we steady? The revs rise, the lights go out, we are underway and racing. And Cuthbert keeps it pinned to the outside, going into clubhouse. Radenkovic still has the lead as Loet looks up the inside. Two, three abreast. There's someone that has just gone off the circuit. Carts here, there, and everywhere at the back end of the field, including Ollie Wise in the 256. So they make their way to the back stretch for the first time. Radenkovic is leading. Lewet has got past Cuthbert up into P2. Shawman's now up into sixth position. Alfayez looking up the inside of Armand Hamilton, who goes off and onto the grass. That allows Timo Jungling to get through along with the two, three, five of Lucas Els. Now Cuthbert fancies an opportunity at going for the race lead, but Thomas Behrman and Archie Clark were side by side. Clark has gotten through on his teammates as they complete the top five. The wet swinging to the outside into clubhouse to try and get the run on Mateo Radenkovic. Through back into turn three they go. And the top six of the opening lap were covered by just under 1.2 seconds. Bit of a gap between Shawmans in sixth and Alfayez in seventh, who's got Timo Jungling amongst others. Move has been facilitated. That is by Kenzo Craigie in the 244 from Argenti Motorsport. He's got through on Lucas Sells in the 298 of Josh Graham. 
is just behind the French driver. As one driver loses a bag full of positions coming out of Dunlop, Rodenkovic still leads after two laps. But Louet is gi not giving up, not giving in. Cuthbert has joined the party. And they were four tenths apart after the opening two laps of this race. Antoine Cristel has dropped all the way down to stone dead last out of 34. Thomas Rudokas finds himself in 25th position behind Matteo Dovan. There's, there's some more battling going on because Kenzo Craigie is now ahead of Francis Van Bouguignon. That is a change for ninth on the road. So Craigie slowly but surely climbing the order. Across the line again, they go to complete lap number three. Loet has yet to make a move on Radenkovic for the race lead. Meantime, Archie Clark is pretty much with Max Cuthbert. Clark, in the meantime, has set the fastest lap of the race, 53.628 seconds on lap number three. Getting towards the midpoint of lap number four here in the sunny afternoon, Sunday sunshine here at Val d'Argentine in Western France. And now Cuthbert looks for the move up the inside on Bo Louet. Louet gives him room. Cuthbert is through. Clark is now right on the back bumper of the 224. But in the meantime, behind, there is a lot going on. Thomas Ingram Hill has got his elbows out, battling away with the likes of Noah Janssen. And there is a time penalty. And it's going to the 256. And that is Ollie Wise. Ollie currently running in 35th position, 33rd position, and there is a change. Clark through on Louette, and he's just been, he's had a little bit of a touch on the left rear, courtesy of Thomas Behrman, and that has allowed a few more drivers to get through. Shawman's up into fourth. Hamza al from Jordan now runs in fifth. Six looks to be Timo Jungling. Kenzo Craigie in seventh. And Bolloway starts to initiate his comeback drive. He goes back up the inside of the 244 through turn seven. A little bit further back, Thomas Ingram Hill still battling away with Noah Janssen. That's for 14th on the road. Dave Stevens in the 292 has set the previous, has set the fastest lap of the race so far, 53.332. Stevens at the moment currently circulating in 23rd position. There's Joshua Graham looking to get past Ryan Bourguignon. Could have the run coming down the back stretch. It's about two cart lengths behind. Casper Shawman's in the meantime in fourth position. It's just taken nearly a tenth out of Archie Clark and he's bringing Hamza al and all and sundry behind with him. Rudenkovic is carrying on controlling the he's controlling proceedings is the 296 13 years of age based out of Schilder. He's won every single race so far this weekend all three heats that he took part in yesterday and also the pre-final this morning. Capping that off with pole position. Thomas Berman in the meantime, running, running at the top nine, has just been in the fastest lap of the race, 53.117 seconds. As Bolloet looking up the inside of Timo Jungling and has got through on the 265, nearly opened the door in the meantime for Kenzo Craigie in the 244 from Argenti Motorsport. That's a battle for sixth position. And now Craigie is through. Behrman now closing in on the 265 from Dan Holland Racing. As they come across the line once again. Lap number seven in the books. And Max Cuthbert is within three tenths of the race leader. Clark is just over six tenths behind Radenkovic on the road after completing seven laps of racing. And a five second penalty 
going the way of Thomas Behrman. Just seeing that on the digi flag on the start finish straight. So Behrman has got to make up some time. And Alfaez has been closing in rather quickly to the back of Casper Shawmans. He's eight one hundredths quicker than the two four zero. Top five, rounded out by Hamza Alfaez, covered by a second and a half. Top ten, rounded out by Joshua Graham, now covered by 4.1 seconds. And ten seconds, covering the top 24 drivers, rounding out Tom Strella from Dan Holland Racing, representing Latvia in the 2-3-8. August Raver now in the 2-2-9. Sets the fastest lap of the race. August Raver currently sitting in 15th. Uh, five second time penalty for Thomas Behrman was for pushing. Uh, someone's just gone off the track, just off of the piff paff chicane towards the back end of the field and someone's gone very, very wide coming out of that uh, penultimate corner. Might have been Tom Strayler. There's a little bit of a dogfight happening down the start finish straight, heading into Clubhouse. Looks like it was the battle involving William Kovacevic, I would imagine. That'd probably be at the, sh the back end of the field. Ryan Gandor from Canada, the 219 representing KR Sport, is no longer in the race as Bolouet looks up the inside. And it's on Hamza Al Fayez, and he goes over the top left of the Jordanians front bumper, and inadvertently. Caught out in the crossfire, that is Kenzo Craigie. So a move there from Bolouet. Looks up the inside of Hamza al -Fayez. They came out of turn seven. And Loet, well, the way that everything was just closing so quickly. It's turned the race on its head a little bit here. And al -Fayez is now losing ground. He's uh, just been passed by Timo Jungling. Bolowitz just right back behind him. They've got Te Thomas Behrman in tow. Alberto Kiko Fracassi as there was a little bit of a bump from behind, courtesy of Bolowitz on Hamza Alfayez, who inadvertently hit the back bumper of Timo Jungling. This is going to get a bit too close for comfort here, coming through into turn number eight. Alfayez hung out to dry on the outside. Trying to go through is Alberto Kiko Fracassi and Joshua Graham. Up the inside of Thomas Behrman through Dunlop goes Alfayez. And Alfayez, is he going to pin it to the inside? He is. They are side by side coming across the line. And now here comes Fracassi. Fracassi up the inside of the pair of them. Got two for the price of one. Alfayez retakes the place back. Now through into turn number three. This is 50 seconds on the timer remaining. Plus an additional lap. Alberto Kiko Fracassi took the absolute biggest opportunity possible and made it count. He's put himself ahead of Thomas Behrman. Joshua Graham now looking up the inside there as well. But couldn't put a move on Thomas Behrman at that particular occasion. Armand Hamilton has got Hayan Borguino just behind along with Thomas Ingram Hill and August Raber. Radenkovic still leading as we go on to the penultimate lap. Lap 13 out of 14. Radenkovic leads by nearly three and a half tenths of a second. Head of Max Cuthbert. Archie Clark rounding up the top three. Shawmans in fourth. Jungling fifth. Loet, Alfaez. And there is drama. And that is for the 2-12. Hungary's Armand Hamilton turned around the wrong way. And he rejoins. He was running P11 at that point. Timer has now expired. One more lap to go after this. Bolouet, despite being down in sixth position, has the fastest lap of the race in his pocket. 53.017 seconds. 1,280 metres remain in the Junior Rotax final. 
Radankovic has not put a foot wrong all weekend. They go through clubhouse for the final time. More dodging and ducking and diving and weaving between the likes of Joshua Graham, August Raber, Thomas Ingram Hill. A little bit further back from the top four, there is a battle happening between Timo Jungling and Bolowax. That's for fifth place. Jungling runs a little bit wide and he runs onto the grass. Alfaez has caught them. So is Behrman. So is Fracassi. But the leader now making his way into turn number 11 is Max Cuthbert planning something special. We're about to find out. Out of the final corner, a complete clean sweep this weekend for Belgium's Mateo Radankovic. Pole position in time qualifying. Three wins in the heats yesterday. The pre-final this morning. And he's done it all. Final in this... Uh, the, the win in the final this afternoon. Beating Max Cuthbert by just a tenth and a half of a second. After 14 laps of racing. So Cuthbert takes second, Clark takes third, Shawman's fourth, Jungling in fifth, Alfaez in sixth position. As a lot of his uh, peers within the junior Rotax paddock giving him the thumbs up to Mateo Radenkovic saying congrats, well done buddy, great job this weekend. No one has been able to touch him. Thomas Behrman, Bolo X, Alberto Kiko Fracassi and August Reber round out the top ten. Crick Norton. Lucas Sells, Joshua Graham, Ryan Bourguino, Thomas Ingram Hill, and Noe Janssen. They round out the top 15. There have been a couple of amendments because of two five second time penalties for pushing. One going to the 292 of Dave Stevens, one going to the 259 of Thomas Behrman. But Radenkovic takes the win. Cuthbert second. Clark, Shawmans, and Jungling round out the top five. Hamza Alfayez in six ahead of Bolouette. Alberto Kiko Fracassi. August Raber, Crick Noren, Lucas Sells, Joshua Graham, Ryan Bourguignon, Thomas Ingram Hill, and Noe Janssen running at the top 15. Olivier Yonkers, Matteo Dovern, Thomas Rudokas, Kenzo Craigie, Thomas Behrman, Boris Maximov, Tom Streller, Zain El Homosani, Matthias Yalarup, Kasper Nissen running at the top 25 and completing the 33 that finished were Julian Kovacevic, Dave Stevens, Antoine Crisel, Roman Kitzinger, Armand Hamilton, Knud Nielsen. Sky Parker, Ollie Wise, and unfortunately on lap eight, Ryan Gandor was confirmed as a retirement.
Now it's time for the senior Rotax final. Here is your starting grid. On pole position, it will be Mark Kimber from the UK. He'll have teammate from Strawberry Racing representing Belgium alongside him on the front row, Kai Hillertz. Sean Butcher and Kai Hunter will be on row number two. Lachlan Robinson and Nolan Lamare will be on row three. Paul Fulquemin and Ethan Jeff Hall row four with Zombor Kovac and Devin Horst rounding out the top ten. Miska Kaskinen, Matthew Higgins, Vic Stevens, Austin Lee, Jules Roussel, Jaden Teen, Lewis Gilbert, Tommy van der Soijs, Lauren Legal, and Camille McFarlane round out the top 20. Daniel Halsworth, Matisse Kanenjak, Dion van Verven, Svede Uben, Gustavs Usakovs, Lotus Sveen, Montego Marsen, Arthur Hobart, Paul Cusel, and Magic Hamera round at the top 30, completing the 36 strong grid. Lilian Richard, Alexander Salvinkov, Janis Diak, William Christensen, Tobias Clausen, and Zach Scowler. So as in the pre-final earlier on, it'll be 14 minutes plus an additional lap. The three drivers in the previous race actually penalised with a front fairing uh, five second penalty one of which was Austin Lee, Arthur Hobart, and also Yannis Diak uh, received front, uh, found that their front fairings were not in the correct position. But Mark Kimber at the moment is the one that has been on form. He won three heats yesterday. He won the pre-final earlier on today. The air temperature has reached 26 degrees Celsius. The sun is high up above and beating its very significant warmth down onto the tarmac and onto everyone underneath it. So are we ready? Are we steady? The revs rise. Lights are out first time in the senior road tax final. And everyone makes the run down to clubhouse. Hillert's trying to keep it around the outside of Kimber going through into the next left-hander. Is he going to make it through? Not quite. Hunter's up the inside of Butcher through into turn number three to take third place. Robinson side by side with more than likely Nolan Lemaray. And Lemaray's got through on the number 326 for fifth position. As they're two, three abreast coming down the back stretch. Hard on the brakes, turn it right, rotate the cart, steer it in. Some people still side by side, some nearly edging onto the grass on the outside of turn number six. And someone does actually hit two wheels onto it. Jockeying for position through into turn eight into the Piff Path chicane. Down into the final corner and Kimber leads. But now Kai Hunter Trying to go towards the outside of Kai Hillertz, heading into Clubhouse. Sean Butcher is waiting in the wings to see if anything transpires in front of him. Between the two, right directly in his, in his crosshairs. So Kai Hunter was briefly ahead of Kai Hillertz by eight one hundredths of a second, as that was Miska Kaskinen. Having uh, someone up the inside of him would have more than likely been Divian Horst in the 345. So a lot of fast, frantic action in the first minute and a half of this 14 minute, plus an additional lap final here at Circuit du Vin d'Argentan. But Mark Kimber trying to stretch an early lead. His lead now is nearly seven tenths of a second. And he's just put in a 52.886 second lap time. Hunter, Hillitz and Butcher battling away. Robinson has dropped a couple of positions at the very least. As all, there's a bit of a touch between the two in front of him. And Robinson has got, that was Zombor Kovac up his inside. Or was that Lewis Gilbert? Looks like it was Lewis Gilbert that got through. As there's a, a scrap happening. A few carts in front between the 905 and Nolan Lemare, who's just got through on Ethan Jeff Hall. So Jeff Hall down a position. 
demoting him down into sixth place as once again another flat out lap around this 1,280 metre circuit. Mark Kimber again with another fastest lap of the race, 52.677. As running wide through Clubhouse, that was Nolan MRA and Ethan Jeff Hall took the perfect opportunity to swing it up the inside and get through on the 9.05 from France. So MRA demoted back down to sixth place. Divian Horst is in seventh. Jules Roussel, Lewis Gilbert and Tommy van der Stoys round out the top ten. So Paul Forquemin, Miska Kaskin and Matthew Higgins, Jaden Teen and Vic Stevens ran out the top 15. Lachlan Robinson's dropped down to 17th position. It's been a lot of jockeying for position around multiple points at this fast flowing technical momentum carrying circuit. But Kimber has only stretched a marginal lead now as Kai Hunter has got through on Hillitz for second place. Hillitz in third. Butcher is about 0.34 behind and is not lapping faster than him, but Tommy van der Stoys, the youngster from The Hague in the Netherlands, in the 3 1 1, has just put in the fastest lap of the race, a 52.301. And now he's closing in on the 329 of Lewis Gilbert for ninth place. Through into turn eight, now into the Piff Pass chicane. On the run up towards Dunlop, the right hander. And then the drivers put the pedal to the metal. They accelerate at full speed through the sweeping right-hander once again. And what's more interesting, Kai Hunter's pace is now starting to be a little bit quicker than Mark Kimber. The gap now just over six and a half tenths between first and second position. Meanwhile, the battle for P3 continues onward between Kai Hillertz and Sean Butcher. Paul Grisel has dropped to the back end of the field in 36th place. Austin Lee has got past Jaden Teen for 14th. Just under nine minutes to go, plus an additional lap. And way behind the top eight, there is a lot of squabbling happening. Round about towards the bottom part of the top 15. Meantime, Devian Horst manages to find a way through on Nolan Emmerhe. That was a great move from the young Dutchman. Through into Clubhouse, and he got through on the 905, who now has Jules Roussel for close company. That's sixth, seventh, and eighth position as they hurtle their way at breakneck speed down the back straight. Heading into the double right at turns five and six. And Van der Soys in the meantime has got past Lewis Gilbert. And now we'll see the three in front. Van der Soys now ninth and climbing forward up the grid. Lap seven completed. And once again, Hunter has done a personal best, but Kai Hillertz has just put in the fastest lap of the race with a 52.280. But we have had a five second time penalty being given. Looked to be the 909 of Magic Hemera, I believe. And seven and a half minutes still to go. The top four were covered by one, just under 1.2 seconds. Ethan Jeff Hall might have a little bit of pace to spare and to try and close in on them. Meantime, there has been a change for position as Austin Lee has got past Jade and Team. They've got Zombor Kovac right with them, along with uh, Gustav Zusikovs and also Camille McFarlane. As we have got yellow flags at turn number 11 at Dunlop, there is a cart off and into the gravel. And that was... Now, I was trying to catch the number. That was Jules Roussel. Jules Roussel is beached in the gravel and is out. And a little bit further down the back, towards the back end of the field, well, a little bit further down the field, Gustav Zusakov's battling away with Laurent Legault. 
as Jaden Thien gets past by Camille McFarlane. He's got Uzakovs not too far behind in the 359 who tries to look towards the inside of turn number seven. Behind him, there's the 323 of Laurent Ligor. Then the 907. That's Matisse Karnijak. Janis Diak has been making steady progress in this race as well. The 339 from Germany with Kraft Modersport. Now is currently up into 23rd and is climbing. Meantime, Miska Kaskinen and Lachlan Robinson are now battling over 11th position as they make their way out of clubhouse into turn number three. More squabbles going on. Ustakov's up the inside of Ligor. Now the 907 gets through. Matisse Kanijak. Yanis Diak has the door firmly closed in his direction. We've got another five-second time penalty. That is going to go to Jules Roussel, but with his cart beached in the gravel and now pulled to the side out of harm's way, that will not make his, his race be any worse than it is. Legou in the meantime, keeping ahead of Matisse Conajac. The train is actually starting to build up behind the Canadian. As we have just over five minutes to go. Robinson again trying to put an offensive against Miska Kaskinen from Finland. And that is for 11th position. Matthew Higgins rounds out the top 10 in the 375. As all, a little bit of a tussle. A little bit of a tussle going through into turn number three. That was involving one of the KR Sport carts. Didn't quite pick out the number. I think the cart behind is Montego Masson, so that would suggest to me it's Magic Camera in the 909. So Zach Scowler unfortunately out after seven laps. Jules Roussel out after lap number eight, having been beached in the gravel. Four minutes 20 still to go, plus an additional lap. No change in the top 10. But a change in 11th because Lachlan Robinson has now gotten past Miska Kaskinen. And we'll try and see if he can move up a little bit further up the field. However, our race leader, Mark Kimber, has just put in a new fastest lap of the race, extended his gap over Kai Hunter to just north of seven tenths of a second. 52.173 seconds by the number 302 from Strawberry Racing. Montego Maston gets past Magic Himera for 28th. Yanis Diak now past Matisse Kanajak for 22nd. A lot of close quarter action in this race. But the top four are covered by just under 1.4 seconds. Sean Butcher, in the meantime, has taken over a tenth of a second out of Kai Hillitz. has got the gap down to just over three tenths between the two that were battling tooth and nail over the European Championship last year. So, just been informed by live timing that the 308 of Jules Roussel and the 909 of Magic Camara both receive a time penalty of five seconds for causing an avoidable collision. Two minutes 40 still to go, plus an additional lap. Kimber still trying to extend that lead. And Kai Hillitz is just put in the fastest lap of the race. Now it's his turn to hold that in his hand. 52.086, top three covered by not much. As a little bit further back, Lewis Gilbert battling away with Tommy van der Soys. This is for seventh on the road. Just in front of them from the Netherlands is the 345 of Devian Horst, teammate to Tommy van der Soys at Boven Power. But what's going to happen in the next two minutes plus an additional lap? Kimber has not really scarped away into the distance, but he has controlled proceedings, which is when you have that opportunity of being on pole position, you're the one that dictates what's happening behind you. Kimber now re-secures the fastest lap of the race, 52.032. And extends his gap over Kai Hunter to just north of six tenths of a second. 
Phillips is in third, 1.1 seconds behind the race leader. Sean Butcher, nearly a further three tenths back in fourth. Fifth is Ethan Jeff Hall, who's running the race on his own. Plenty of clear air in front and behind. The 397, based out of Lancaster. Lewis Gilbert, in the meantime, has managed to get through on Tommy van der Stoys and has left him for dead. Left him in his dust. So the leader makes his way through into Clubhouse and out of Clubhouse now into the left-hander here at turn three. Got about 37 seconds on the clock remaining plus an additional lap. Moves have been made. Usikovs has lost out 20th position to Ligor. Austin Lee passed Dion van Verven for 14th. Montego Masson passed Alexander Savinkov. And that is a change for 27th on the road. But we're coming down to the final few seconds of this race. It's going to be close. Kim is out of the final corner. So it was out of whisker. So there's this and one more lap to go. Kimba has been pulling away, ever so slightly, fractionally doing so. The Butcher has been trying to close on in and pass Kai Hillertz for third place in this final. But now it's going to be the final lap of the senior Rotax final. One lap to go. Kimber's lead now stretches to just over seven tenths, and he puts in the fastest lap of the race, 52.002 seconds. Kai Hunter holding on into set in second position. As soon as he got into that place, he has not relinquished it. Hillocks holding station in third ahead of Sean Butcher. Leaders making their way through into turn number seven for the final time here on lap number 18. We've had one driver do a clean sweep this weekend. We are just one more corner away for it to happen again as Mark Kimber solidifies his push in the title fight here in France. He wins by 6.39 seconds. 0.639 seconds and celebrates after crossing the start finish straight the finish line with two hands off the wheel no one i repeat no one can beat mark kimber when it's when he's on his a game he wins by 0.639 seconds ahead of kai hunter kai hillertz rounds out the top three a great result for what has been his debut with Strawberry Racing in the 374. Sean Butcher takes fourth ahead of Ethan Jeff Hall, Devian Horst, Lewis Gilbert takes seventh, so the Pride of Scotland made some headway in the latter stages of the race. Tommy van der Soys, Paul Fulquemin, and Matthew Higgins ran at the top 10. Lachlan Robertson rounds out the weekend with a top 11 finish ahead of Vic Stevens, Nolan Lemeray, Dion van Verven, Austin Lee, Miska Kaskinen, Zombor Kovac, Camille McFarlane, Jaden Teen and Janis Diak running out the top 20. Gustav Zusakovs, Matisse Kanijak, Arthur Hobart, Leutus Twin and Lohan Lego ran out the top 25. Svere Uben, Montego Massen, Alexander Savinkov, William Christensen, Paul Grissel, Lilian Richard, Tobias Clausen, Daniel Halsworth and Magic Hemera rounding out the 34 that finished the race with Jules Roussel out after beaching it in the gravel on at Dunlop at, uh, on lap 7 and Zach Scowler retiring on lap six.
driver announcement. Driver announcement, could Bolowet 224 plus entrant report to the stewards immediately, please? That's Bolowet to the stewards plus entrant immediately, please. Thank you. To close out the show here in Western France at Circuit du Val d'Argentan, it is the DD2 and the DD2 Masters final. Let's take you through the starting grid. So it's going to be an all-Dutch front row, courtesy of Martin van Leeuwen and Enzo Boll. 
David Altleishner and Lucas Pano round out the top two rows, followed by Maxim Shurko and Maxim Didix in row number three. Leonardo Bacaglini and Vili Viliainen will be on row four with Philip Moitzi and Victor Frostbay on row five. Jakob Bezel and Peter Bezel, row six. Row seven, Kini Gerhardt and Axel Sarniala. Carl Gustav Borgard and Mats Johan Overhoff round at the top 16. Martinez Tankiewicz promoted to the race victory in the pre-final. He starts on DD2 Masters pole on 17th. Following him will be Jules Cousin, Nicolas Picot, Sebastian Schul, Tim Stipitz, Tem Dennis Thum, Nicolas Guillaume, Michael Becker, Christoph Capitain, Patrick Snowles, Lock Malice, Jimmy Chaumier, Igor Mukin, Tony Hogg, Mansley's due to start 30th ahead of Manuel Tenchert and Rasmus Vendelbol. So, they are primed and ready for our final race. Are we ready? Are we steady? The revs will start to rise now. Lights go out first time. Great start by the pole sitter as Van Leeuwen leads the field into clubhouse for the first time. Enzo Boll slots over behind the Dutchman into second position as they filter their way through clubhouse. And someone's gone grass tracking already. And that was one of the stand pack of the SP Motorsport cart. Someone else is having a little bit of an off-track excursion. That was Leonardo Bacaglini. Might have been Axel Sarniala, possibly, that went uh, over the grass. And there's a bit of a scrap happening for third position because David Altleishner has got Lucas Perno and Maxim Scherko right with him. Maxim Fedix is there. So is also the 421 of Philip Moitzi. It looks like it was Bacaglini that did have uh, a couple of drops of position. But after the opening lap, it's Van Leeuwen that leads the way. Bowl in second, Altleishner third. Fourth, it is Bernal, Schurkel, Didix, Moitzi, Villain and Bacaglini, Victor Frost Bay. They ran out the top 10. Nicola Pico has got the lead and is currently P15 in DD2 Masters. Field now makes its way up towards turn number four once again. And Lucas Bruno has dropped down to sixth position because he's been passed not only by Maxim Schurko, but also just going through down the back straightaway into turn number five. That was Maxim Dirix that got through on him. So the field makes its way through turn number eight and up towards Piff Path and now through Dunlop. Van Leeuwen now knows that at this particular moment, what will happen... ...is that he is going to have a fight on his hands, and he's got some of the youngest competitors behind him. Two of which make up second and fourth position. So they go down the back straight away once again. The three behind out, uh, behind, uh, oh, and that was a big moment for Lucas Bernal, oh, and into the side of him goes Villa Villain, and two wheels into the air, and he gets clattered into, and that has caused a chain reaction. So, Villa Villain, and out of the race, Lucas Bernal, that is one of the KSCA, it's one of the Sodi carts, and also 
one of the sheepers racing carts. Was that Nicola Guillaume that got uh, caught up in the crossfire? He's gone out under his own steam, and that is four out. Looks like that was Tim Stippitz that got involved, uh, that was involved in there. It was Guillaume that was the uh, second of the sheepers racing carts. And the clear frustration from Tim Stippitz was clear to see. And now all four drivers will have to uh, watch by the sidelines. As Van Leeuwen continues to lead the way. Bowl still holding on to second, but there has been a change for third. Keep your eyes on the 4-3-5 Maxim Shurko from Lithuania. And he's closing again. Remember what happened in the pre-final. Shurko had the pace. And the thing is, with over three and a half minutes of this 14-minute final completed, there is no gap to the tune of 2.7 seconds that someone needs to close. That gap is now half a second. So it's only a case of when, not if, does Maxim Shuriko get past Enzo Bold for second place and then goes hunting after the 4.03 for the Nether from the Netherlands. Outlechner has got some clear area in front and behind him. Now on to lap number five. So, so far, we've had a non-starter from Mads Ries. Tim Stippitz, Nicola Guillaume, Vili Villain and Lucas Perno out after that multi-car incident on lap number three, coming out of turn number six. And Scherko is within earshot. He's within lunge range of Enzo Boll. Right up close, going through into the braking zone into turn number, number five was the Lithuanian. Don't count Outlechner out of this either. He showed what he's capable of back at Karting Genk back in mid-April this year. Some further changes. Mats Johan Overhoff, who started 31st in the pre-final, started 16th in this final. He is now in a genuine 11th place. He's ahead of Axel Sarniola by just over six tenths of a second. And what's more, Mats Johan Overhoff has just set the fastest lap of the race, 51.996. After that incident at nearly 120 kilometers an hour that curtailed his heat stay, he now has come back and he's come back hungry and wanted to, wanted to really showcase his speed in a DD2 cart. His initial thoughts behind it was to get some training again with the front and rear braking system on a DD2. And that was for Project E20, which he competed in at Karting Genk. And now Shurko is closing. He's waiting for his chance to strike. We are 45 seconds away from half time in this final here in DD2 and DD2 Masters. Nicola Pico, in the meantime, is 14th and leading the classification in the Masters side of things. And he has only got, well, you know what? He might have a fight on his hand because behind him he's got Carl Gustav Borgard, who in turn has got the number 533 of Martinez Tankiewicz just behind. Then they've got the likes of Patrick Snolls, Lotch Mellis. Dennis Tillman, the 577 representing Germany, is also in that train. But down out of Dunlop. Come the drivers in second and third position. And Van Leeuwen sets another fastest lap of the race. He's now started pulling away. That gap is now 1.3 seconds and climbing. He was exactly two tenths quicker than Enzo Boll. And nearly two tenths quicker than Maxim Shurko, who, has, who seems to have a slight edge on the 4-1-0 from the Netherlands. But at the moment, with the temperatures having increased significantly since the pre-finals earlier on today, has that caused 
a little bit of a differential. As there goes Carl Gustav Borgard up the inside of Nikola Pico. There is Martinez Tankovices, just calmly waiting. Looks to plant his cart on the outside of turn number eight, but now he's up the inside of Pico. That's for the DD2 Masters class lead. He's got through. Tankovices through on Pico, on Pico's home soil. But the Frenchman is not going to give that up, that one up without a fight. I can guarantee you that right now. That's for 15th overall, and more importantly, the class win in DD2 Masters. So Tankovic just does have an opportunity to take a victory here in the final. The Pico was right on his back bumper, right on his case. Within 56 thousandths of a second, and now the change for second has happened. Shurko now, P2. Enzo Ball not willing to give up that second place without saying something about it. Five minutes to go, plus an additional lap. And Martin Van Leeuwen has done it again. He's checked out, he's 2.2 seconds up the road. What can Shurko do now? He's got to start pushing. He's got to start pushing, but that depends on whether the machinery underneath him or the tyres contacting the tarmac underneath are going to respond in kind. Last time out, we did see him pull a significant gap over Enzo Boll. Van Leeuwen's lead now, 2.1 seconds. All oh, right, there's a little bit of activity with Max, uh, Maxim Shuriko in the fact that he's just put in his personal best of the race. 51.866 seconds. And what's more, there's been more developments in DD2 Masters. Dennis Toom has now gotten past Nicolas Picot and is in second in the classification. For DD2 Masters, currently running P17. Tankovic is currently 15th. So at the moment, Martin Van Leeuwen has the fastest lap of the race overall, a 51.847 second lap time. Still have 27 drivers out of the uh, 32 that were due to start. We've got just under three and a half minutes to go. Shurko is still lapping at around about the same pace as being shown by Martin Van Leeuwen. They're literally within, lapping within 11 thousandths of each other at this particular moment. Philip Moitzi from Austria has had a pretty good run in this race. He's currently P6 behind Maxim Dirix, but he's got behind him Victor Frostbay and Italy's Leonardo Baccaglini. So this could be a little bit of a dogfight into the dying moments of this race. Two minutes 40 plus an additional lap still to go. And the response is starting now with two and a half minutes to go. Maxim Shurko responds to Martin Van Leeuwen with a fastest lap of the race, 51.750 from the 4.35. Moitzi coming under pressure from Victor Frostbay, heading into turn four. And Frostbay was looking to the inside. Moitzi defends. Now that's going to bring him back Aglini, but Frostbay up the inside through turn six on the 4.21 from Austria. Nearly opened both the bundles, bundles very, very wide indeed for Bacaglini. But Bacaglini just did not want to go through with that manoeuvre because otherwise that could have taken himself and Moitzi out at the same time. Another fastest lap of the race. Maxim Shuriko, 51.648 seconds. It gets the differential between him and Martin Van Leeuwen down to just over two. Rasmus van der Boe unfortunately will retire from the race from 27th position on lap number 13.
meaning Igor Mukin from Cyprus is the last runner and rider out of 26 still circulating coming down to the last minute and a quarter Van Leeuwen has won two of the four races that have taken place so far up until this point So we're going to have two, well, we're going to have this plus two more laps to go. Lap 16 underway as Van Leeuwen now has the lead of just over two seconds. Maxim Shurikov is quicker than Martin Van Leeuwen, but it is not enough. It cannot be thousands of a second. It needs to be tenths. It needs to be north of three, four, maybe four tenths, maybe even half a second. Because on finals day, when Martin Van Leeuwen is on his A game, once again he proves it that you, you cannot, you have to go at all guns blazing. You've got to get yourself in the right position at the right time. And by being on pole position, it was exactly what he needed. And that was for both the pre-final and the final. Eight seconds to go, seven. Two more laps remain. And as Martin Van Leeuwen goes through the Exeter Clubhouse, timer expires. Maxim Sherko has just responded with one of the best laps so far this weekend. In DD2, he's put in a 51.4. 51.432 from Maxim Sherko, but it is not going to be enough. That gap is now down to 1.8 seconds. He's pulled away comfortably from Enzo Boll just like he did in the pre-final. It was one point, it's, it was over two seconds, the gap between Enzo Boll and Maxim Shurko in the previous race. Shurko getting a post-race penalty, demoting him back down a few more positions to start fifth, as opposed to what would have been second on the road. Last lap board of the weekend is out. Changes for position happening at Dunlop, in particular between two Sodi carts. Van Leeuwen now making his way through into turn number three for the final time. What a, what a Sunday it's been for this driver. 24 years of age, based out of Zolder, one of the nicest guys you could ever want to meet. And when you put him behind the wheel of a DD2 and he shuts the visor down, you get a completely different individual altogether. It was one of three different winners yesterday, which included Carl Gustav Borgard and Belgium's Maxim Dirix. But it's time to celebrate as Martin Van Leeuwen out of the final corner. He wins the pre-final and the final on finals day. What a job by the Dutchman. Flying away from the rest of the field with the greatest of ease. Winning by 1.769 seconds. Well done to Maxim Sechurko uh, from Lithuania. Rounding out the top two, Enzo Boll started on the outside of the front row, finished in third place. David Altleichner and Maxim Didix complete the top five positions in this final, ahead of Victor Frostbay, Philip Moitzi, Pedro Bezel, Jakob Bezel, and rounding out the top ten, Axel Sarniala. Leonardo Bacaglini would finish 11th ahead of Mats Johan Overhoff, Kilian Geha, Karl Gustav Borgard, and Martinez Tankiewicz picks up the victory in the final, representing Lithuania in DD2 Masters in 15th. Patrick Knowles Lochmelis in 16th, head of Dennis Toulm and Nicolas Picot, who ran at the top three in the final for DD2 Masters. Christoph Capitan and Sebastian Schu ran at the top 20. Manuel Tencha, 21st, head of Jules Cousin, Jimmy Chaumier, Michael Becker, Tony Hogg, and Igor Mukin running at the 26 runners and riders that completed all 18 laps. Rasmus van der Boe pulled the cart into the pits on lap number 13. And unfortunately, the four cart incident uh, just coming out of turn number six on lap three meant the retirement on the spot of Vili Viliainen, Nicolas Guillaume, Tim Stippitz, and Canada's Lucas Pano with Mads Ries opting to not start. So that concludes the racing action here at Circuit du Val d'Argentan. Firstly, a few thank you. So a big thank you, first of all, to the circuit itself, the man who runs it. Thank you very much, Arnaud Sarza. A big thank you to the marshalling team, uh, the local Red Cross, the doctors who have been on site here, 
but with her assistance. A big thank you to the restaurant and the cafeteria here. Also, a big thank you to uh, the following departments. Scrutineering, timekeeping, race control, stewards. Uh, we'd like to say a big thank you to everybody in the paddock that has been here with us this weekend. But in just a few days, which basically is 41 days' time, the Euro Trophy makes a return to Belgium, but we're not going back to the home of champions. Oh no, we're going to the Colval region, to a little place called Marienburg, to Katting des Fagnes, between the 7th and the 9th of July. The road to Bahrain continues here in 2023. And on behalf of the organizers, MW Race Consulting and Camp Company Game Beha, we'd like to say a big thank you for everyone watching on the official Rotax Max Euro Trophy live stream. And it's a goodbye from me, Alex Goldschmidt, your official commentator. We'll see you all very soon in the Colvin region in Marienburg on the 7th of July for time qualifying for round three, when these four classes will be rejoined by Minimax. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Good night.